don't let demons chill in your house. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really sure how I got this like perfect wave going on, but like I just hope that I can recreate it. Also, it is 105 out in Las Vegas right now. I get so dehydrated in the summer. It's just not even funny. Water in the summer in Vegas is, is life. You know what I mean? Also, I had a guacamole removed here and I'm like extremely ugh, insecure about it right now. So I'm gonna make sure that when I change, I'm wearing like a very high turtleneck till this thing heals. Okay, so today, first of all, look at that backdrop. Like, I look like I'm doing my makeup in Haunted Forest. Thank God. You know, like, full circle, my life is complete now. I am doing my makeup in Haunted Forest. Um, I am going to be using as many ColourPop cosmetics as possible today. Um, ColourPop is one of my all-time favorite brands. I have so many ColourPop products. Um, I was like, oh, I should just bring out all of my ColourPop cosmetics, but literally I have so many. I don't have like a base and stuff like that. I've used, there's, there are some ColourPop products I've used that I don't like either, but I have so many things. Let me show you guys some of the stuff that I have. So I'm going to be using a stick foundation by ColourPop in Fair, which is 27N. Um, I have some of their blush sticks, a highlighter stick. I have pressed powders, I have another, oh, I have a contour stick, so that's cool, I'll use that. Um, yeah, I've got all kinds of random things in here. I have a ton of um, solo shadows from ColourPop and this guy, like these, um, some glitters in here, and then I have some of their matte lipsticks, so we'll see what we do when we get to that point. But for the palette today, I think I'm gonna use So Jaded, um, this is in lieu of Ed Gein because we are going to be talking about Ed Gein today. Um, and poor Ed Gein was just so jaded, you know, like he's got, he's got his little issues. I actually have a very personal um, story about Ed Gein that I'm going to share at the end as well. So because it's so hot out, I'm going to use Eucerin Daily Protection SPF. I don't really plan on going outside much, um, but if I do step out in the sun, so to make sure I have your face protected. Let that sit for a minute. I'm gonna go in with um, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I've actually really liked this recently. Some people had told me that it wouldn't work if you had oily skin, but honestly, I think it works one of the best primers for oily skin. So I'm gonna start out with this stick foundation. Um, hopefully it's my shade, because I bought this a while ago. Fair 27 in. Not really sure if I should use a beauty blender or a brush. Let me try a foundation brush. This is actually a ColourPop foundation brush. I'm just gonna... Looks like it got wiped away a little bit with the... Yeah, see, I'm not a fan of the brush, but I actually don't usually apply my makeup with a brush anyway, so I'm gonna go back in with another layer. And I'm actually going to use the drier side of the Beauty Blender. It seems to work better. I do have oily skin, so stick foundations do usually break me out. I don't know what it is about stick foundations clogging your pores if you're oily skin, but just they're not good for you. So I'll probably have to take this off um, when I'm done. But it looks really good. It's full coverage, so if you have dry skin or combo skin, it'd probably work better for you. Dry Beauty Blender is the way to go with the stick foundation. I don't have um, any ColourPop concealer. To be honest, I'm not a fan of their concealers. They tend to um, kind of break apart by the end of the day, especially with me living in Vegas because it's so hot. So I'm going to go in with the Kimchi Concealer. Um, this is in Light Beige. I just really like that this is like a little brush applicator. And it's like really precise. It kind of gets where you need the product. I am going to use a wet beauty blender for this one. Okay, so for contour, I do have this um, ColourPop No Filter Stick. And this is in medium dark. I feel like this is a little dark for me, but I'm going to go ahead and pray. So to blend the contour out, it's actually better to use the wet side of the sponge because you're blending it into your base. ColourPop is great for the price 
But I think you can get a lot of it too now at Ulta. Okay, for powder, I have two. I don't know why I have two fair. Um, I think one's used and one's newer. So their fair pressed powder, in my opinion, is better than their loose powder. Their loose powder, once again, living in Vegas, um, breaks apart by the end of the day. So it's really tough living in this climate. I can't use, plus having oily skin, I just can't use the same things everybody else can. Okay, so I use my ColourPop palette pretty much every time you guys see me, right? This is a do-it-yourself, build-it um, ColourPop palette. And I also have a couple of the extra ones. These are a little bit more on the purple side. I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly contour over what I did just to set it. And for nose contours, I don't prefer to use um, cream contour. I use powder because I feel like it's more precise. And I'm going to do a little nose contour with another highlight from Co ColourPop. I'm going to take the ColourPop blush stick. I don't know what color this is. These blush sticks are not marked, so I don't know what color this is. I'm going to add just a little bit of cream blush to my beauty blender. Oh yeah, just a little bit. It gives you a little pop. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the highlight. Very subtle highlight. I might have to spruce that up later, you know what I'm saying? This is the um, highlight blush stick that had a little bit of like a purple hue to it. It's there, it's just very subtle. I also don't have a eyeshadow base for from ColourPop, so I'm just gonna use my P. Louise in 0.5, it's just my fave. I honestly feel bad because it's like every time I sit down to do a tutorial it comes out as this like dark edgy makeup but it's just who I am man like I'm gonna try I always say I'm gonna try not to go dark and it ends up being dark I think at this point we just need to accept our fate and move on I am NOT one to walk around with like a nude look so one thing I do want to change is I have this eyeshadow called frog it's by ColourPop and it's super shiny it's very sheer but honestly, it is a shadow, but it's a it's one of their, what is it, super shock shadows. But I think it's a perfect highlight. So I actually used to wear this all the time as a highlight. So I'm going to take frog and just glow up. And on that note, who is ready for some creeps and cosmetics? Now there's kind of a sick joke with Ed Gein, and the sick joke is, is that there is a haunted museum here in Vegas, it's Zach's Haunted Museum, and I've been there a ridiculous amount of times, and um, the one spirit that always follows me home is Ed Gein. There was a noise that just happened in my studio, which probably means that he's been summoned here, and hopefully he'll give us some good evidence. The one spirit that always follows me home is... The one spirit that always follows me home is... So yes, I have to say I have a personal relationship with Ed Gein. He has followed me home several times from the museum. <clears throat> and he's actually been in this studio space. So Ed Gein was born August 27th of 1906. He was born in Wisconsin. Um, 1906, wow. Like, that's crazy. Um, I guess I, you think of Ed Gein because he was alive in the 80s, so you don't realize he was like born in the early 1900s. That's a long time for him to have lived. So before I get sidetracked, I am going to use the So Jaded palette in lieu of Ed Gein. I wish I could say that I'm probably not going to end up with this dark bottom row, but I'm probably going to end up with this dark bottom row kind of dig in some like earth tones here. Then again, I might go in with the blues. I don't know, I'm kind of digging this like blue area over here. So it's these six shades. Um, and then maybe go in with some of this opal, like this jazz up here, mm -hmm, for sure. So back to Ed Gein, he died July 26th of 1984, which was pretty much right before I was born. So that's probably why we think of him as a, uh, not as, you know, like H.H. H. Holmes, you know, like he's he was, sooner than H.H. H. Holmes. So he was an American serial killer, Ed Gein, 
and uh, he had some pretty gruesome stuff. So just as a heads up, if you can't stomach this, be careful because I'm just saying. I'm not gonna show any gross images because that's just too much. But let's just say that Ed Gein did inspire films such as Hannibal Lecter and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And we've all seen how those end. So Ed Gein, like all other serial killers, did suffer from somewhat of a traumatic childhood. He had a alcoholic father and his mother was somewhat verbally abusive to him. Although, even though she was abusive to him, he admired her. Like he loved her and um, I think was just like dying for her attention and love and like care. So his brother was Henry. Henry was known to stand up for his brother with his parents and uh, which Gein would never do that too because you would get a whooping, right? Which that was very typical for back then. If he was born in 1906, that means he grew up in the 20s. So, you know, whipping your child back then was very like socially acceptable. So Henry, obviously the brother, didn't like his brother, um, Ed Gein, being, you know, kind of mentally tormented by his parents. So oftentimes his brother would step in basically to um, get his parents to stop harming or hurting his brother, harming or hurting his, harming or hurting his, and interestingly enough, in 1944, his brother, Henry, disappeared under like very questionable circumstances. No one really knew what happened to Henry. Of course, the family said like he died and passed away, but because you're talking about people that are like living in a farm in the middle of nowhere, right? Like middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. So apparently Gein was so distressed by what had happened to his brother because he was very close with Henry that he did go to the police by himself and reported his brother missing. So now that's trauma in itself. Think about that being a kid. Your brother disappears. You think he's just missing. Turns out he's dead and your parents won't tell you what's going on. It seems fishy, and it was like the only person that was really sticking up for you was your brother, and now he's gone. Clearly, he was suspenseful that his parents may have something to do with it. So apparently, his brother's body was found, and his brother Henry had been burned, basically from head to toe. Once again, suspicious, I think so. So the police deemed it accidental. Hmm. Oh, here we go, that same tale of all familiar where nobody wants to be accountable for what's going on, right? So Henry had bruises from literally head to toe, his brother, and the police still deemed it as an accidental death. Now fast forward to 1945, Ed has basically become very strange after the death of his brother and became extremely glued to his mother. His mother was sort of, um, his only friend, if you will. And in 1945, his mother became ill and his mother abruptly died. Now this totally threw Ed Gein's whole life off because he hadn't really coped with the death of his brother. And now you're talking about, you know, the only friend that he also knew on top of that was his mom. Now, looking into Ed Gein's life and some of the things he did, cause he was kind of a hermit and um, got very like obsessed about things and, and stuck to certain people. I do wonder if he had some sort of undiagnosed, untreated autism because I have a cousin with autism. Not to say that people that are autistic will become serial killers. Clearly this kid had some massive, massive trauma in his childhood that led up to becoming the person that he was. But I do think he may have been autistic and um, really had some issues and didn't really know or have like an outlet to get him in any sort of help. So inside of the house where his mother had died because he had been living with her into his adult years, he decided that after his mom died, he did not want anyone to enter the areas that his mother used to use. So this would be like her bedroom, uh, bathroom area, like any of the spots like that she would sit at. She, he actually roped and tied them off and kind of turned those areas into somewhat of like a shrine for his mother that nobody could ever access. He wanted it to stay as normal and preserved as it was the day she died. So Gein ended up running his own little like hardware store that wasn't far from his home. And in 1957, all of a sudden, his life started to change a little bit because the police got involved with Ed. 
And the reason the police were involved was because his mean worker or like manager of his hardware store disappeared mysteriously. Now this person's name was Bernice Warden. Now before she went missing, it was claimed she was with Ed Gein. People in town, obviously small town people talk a lot and they see things and they talk with each other and they had claimed that although she was missing, the last they had seen her with was with Ed Gein. So now once law enforcement got involved, they started searching Ed Gein's property because he still lived on the farm that he had with his parents and they ended up finding her body on the farm. So the creepier thing for police was that she had been shot and then decapitated and they couldn't understand who would be responsible for such a violent crime. Once again, let's revisit the fact that they're living in this little town where stuff like this probably doesn't happen because everybody knows everybody and nobody would have probably assumed that they were living amongst a killer, let alone a serial killer. Now, once the police start investigating his house after they did find her body, they find out that he has other body parts scattered along his property. But the scarier part was for police was some of these people had been buried and they remembered going to these people's funerals because clearly, once again, small town, and they couldn't understand how these people or pieces of these people were arriving on Ed Gein's farm. So their first question was, well, clearly he's like grave robbing, right? Like he's going into their graves and he's, he's taking like their jewelry they're buried with or money or whatever else. But that was when they realized it was much more sinister and that Ed Gein was actually collecting body parts. Now, once the police go inside, they realize it's even worse than that. Not only is he collecting body parts, but he's actually turning these body parts into women's clothing that he would wear, like full on body suits. And he was turning some of the body parts into things like lamps, light switches, um, tapestries on the wall. There was also a tavern um, operator in town and in 1954, she actually went missing and no one knew where she was. Her name was Mary Hogan. And while police were inside of Ed Gein's house investigating, they found her head. Can you imagine the police at that time? Like, they're just like walking through and they're like, yo, I found a head. Yo, I got a head over here, guys. What should I do with it? So apparently Ed Gein did admit that he murdered the two women. He claimed that he killed them because they reminded him of his mother and it was the next closest thing that he had to his mother. But he also argued that it was reason of insanity. Can I just say this palette blends like a dream? Like, wow. I mean, I use some like really bold, loud colors and it's just, it's blending, boo. And even the shimmers, they're like, they're working. Like I'm using aquamarine right now, like it's going. So in 1957, Ed Gein was deemed unfit for trial. So what that means is people came in to assess him and they decided, probably psychologists and, and everything else, and they decided he was not fit to be put on trial. So he was clearly um, had mental issues, right? I'm just gonna go back through and with like some beige and soften these edges just a little bit. I'm using my precious and pearl. That seems to just be enough. I did a very like Atlantean sort of look today. I love Atlantis for those of you that don't know. Now underneath though, I really think I want something bright and I really just think I'm gonna go in with this green just to like, let's make it really sea foam -y, you know what I mean? So anyway, in 1957, Ed Gein was deemed unfit for trial and he was actually administered to, um, or admitted, I'm sorry, Jesus. I mean, he was admitted to um, a psychiatric hospital after that. That is beautiful. This is color emerald. I'm gonna drag it up too so that it sort of just fades into the blue. Now, after he went to a psychiatric hospital, he was um, basically placed there under observation. And back, rounding back around to 1968, now they're saying he's deemed well for um, being put on trial. So basically they were trying to make sure that he would be held responsible for the horrible crimes that he had committed. Blend it right into the green. I'm getting like very siren vibes, what do you think? 
1968, they determined he was able to withstand trial, and they removed him to the psych ward, put him on trial, and then he was found guilty of murder. Although they did put him in the mental hospital afterwards, and that's where he stayed till 1984 when he died. So what kind of uh, pop culture has Ed Gein inspired? Movies like Psycho, um, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Silence of the Lambs. Now there's other reports where Ed Gein's mom died in 1940, somewhere between 1940 and 1945. No one really knows because he was in control of his mother's estate. Now there's more backstory on Henry too, because the first example I just gave you guys would make you think possibly the parents were responsible for Henry's death. Now this story will make you think that Ed was responsible for his brother's death. Henry was dating this girl. She was a divorced mother of two and Henry was like ready to start his family with her and his plan was to move in with her and they were gonna start their life together. Now the other side of the story is Henry didn't stand up to his mother, but that Henry would insult their mother regularly and Ed was offended that his mother was being insulted because it was also believed that Ed's mom was being abused by the dad because he was an alco raging alcoholic, okay? Ed and Henry were supposedly out burning a brush fire because obviously they owned the land and a lot of property and that was how Henry mysteriously was burned to death. Now this is also claimed that when the firefighters saw the smoke burning they came over and that's when they found Henry dead. So Henry and Ed Gein's mom ended up getting sick. She ended up having a stroke and it made her somewhat paralyzed and that was when Ed started taking care of her. This is obviously long after Henry's death. Ed remained you know, very prominently um, in care of his mother that whole time. Now there's also word that there could have been some sort of Stockholm syndrome going on, meaning that um, Ed's parents were abusive to them and he felt devoted to them, probably alongside some sort of mental illness. And um, that was why he never left the home to start a life of his own a relationship and he just kept taking care of his mom. So once the mom did die in 1940, 1945, Ed was just completely distraught about what had happened. Clearly he had devoted his entire life to his mom and his brother's dead, and now he has nothing else to look forward to. So really quickly before I forget, this is new. This is from a company called Fit Cover, okay? Um, this is a lash kit and it's collagen mascara green tea fiber wand. So the way you do it is step one is apply the collagen infused growth serum to your lashes as a base and then you start pushing in the green tea fibers. Apparently this can make your lashes look like they have eyelash extensions without having extensions on. I'll be the judge of that. Um, so I'm going to try this for the first time. So I'm going to curl my lashes really quickly. So apparently, although the one section of the house where his mother lived was left as a shrine, the rest of the house basically turned into a really bad episode of Hoarders. And it was just piled to the ceiling with dirt, trash, and he just like gave up and didn't care about life. He was basically working as a, ma a handyman because that's he owned obviously the handyman uh, like local store which had supplies for the local townspeople. He was also a babysitter, which was really weird to me, like he would be a babysitter. So before his mother's death, apparently he was a very big, like prominent member of the town. After his mother's death, he basically became this weird recluse. Apparently he was also into borrowing books that were about astronomy, Nazis, and cannibalism. What a combo. The more Ed visited the town and like went into the tavern, the more people would disappear one by one. So they really don't know how many people Ed actually picked off. So the worst part about the deaths that they had found from Ed Gein was Bernice Warden. She's the girl that was running his, um, his handy store, right? Bernice Warden. She's the girl that was running his, um, his handy store, right? Bernice Warden. She's the girl that was running his, um, his handy store, right? They had found her hanging upside down her, complete decapitated body from the ceiling and she was basically just skin. So he had basically skinned her from inside out. Ew, who does that? Oh my God, how could you even imagine? 
the process of that for somebody to have like the patience to do that. Oh my God. Supposedly the sheriff also found bones and organs inside of jars, but the most disturbing part was the decor inside of the house that Ed Keen had been creating. There was a waste basket or a trash can that was made out of skin. All of the chair covers were made out of human skin. He had basically made it look like upholstering on his chairs and couch. He had bowls that were made of skulls and the skulls that were on his bedposts as well. Body parts in a shoe box. He had nine lady parts in a shoe box. He had a doorbell that was made of a nipple, a lampshade made of a human skin face, and his lips, he had lips that were cut out that were like this shade puller. So apparently he did admit to the sheriffs that after his mom died that he wanted to make some, some sort of like a woman suit um, because he literally wanted to crawl inside of his mother's skin. They also found a corset that was made out of a woman's um, torso, leggings from human skin, and masks, mini masks that were made from the human heads or faces that he had t grave robbed. So not only is he murdering people in the town, but he's also grave robbing from people that are already dead. So now Gein claimed that when he killed Mary Hogan, he didn't really remember any of it happening. He also admitted that he had visited local cemeteries at least 40 times and taken people out of the cemeteries in their graves. Can you imagine also the work that takes to go to a grave and dig somebody up? Like the patience that that takes? Like wow, 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 wow. He claimed that he frequently blacked out while he was doing these things and he didn't come to until later. He said he felt like he was in a dazed light state and he was not in control of his body, that something or someone else was. He was only tried for Mary Hogan and Bernice Warden, but he was found insane and eventually he died in the institution in uh, 1984. I really wanted to make sure my lashes were like super curled for this. Okay, so I'm doing the collagen first. I found this lash kit. I follow um, somebody on social media that claimed they had used it. I was like, okay, it looks good. So I better, I better get some results here. Okay, I did step one. Step two, gently press the green tea fibers onto your lashes for the eyelash extension look without glue. Step three, add a second coat of mascara over the top of the fibers to seal them. I think I was supposed to like it was supposed to be like fresh. All right, let me try this differently this time. So it's one coat. So as you can repeat as many times necessary. I mean, it works. It definitely makes my like regular lashes look better. I don't think I would go as far as saying that it's like replacing lashes. Like I, I still like my lashes, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, I would wear this on days that I didn't want to uh, take the time to put lashes on. Yeah, I mean, I like this kit, honestly. It's not, I mean, it's really not replacing lashes. Like, I still love those, like, fan lashes. But this would be great for a day that you don't want to wear lashes. But, like, you know, my lashes are so little, they you can't even see them. So I appreciate this, honestly. Let me give a couple of two cents what I have to say. And then we'll move on to, you know, Ed Gein being my, my boyfriend. Dark like crystals for just like an edgy look since we're doing Ed Gein today here. I always get my crystals from Joann's, but honestly most, um, most craft stores will probably have these. They're just like little self-adhesive. When Ed Gein says something like, I blacked out and I don't really remember it happening, I am inclined to think that he was manic bipolar. And the reason I feel that way is because I had lived with someone who's manic bipolar. Now I'm not saying everybody that has mania manic bipolar is a murderer. I'm not saying that. But I am saying in some instances I think that if the mental illness goes untreated long enough, um, it is very well known that bipolar mania when you go manic you don't remember what you're doing um, and I lived with somebody you know for a very long time and they wouldn't remember um, the crazy things that they did they didn't remember it at all so I think people like Ed Gein 
people like Ted Bundy and even John Wayne Gacy or like Jeffrey Dahmer, you have all these serial killers and a lot of times they would say like, you know, I think I blacked out, I don't remember some of it. Now, I don't think all serial killers are bipolar, but there is a sense of mania that you go through when you're bipolar. And I'm actually putting on some lower lashes just for fun today. I don't think every serial killer is bipolar. Like for example, I think um, the Night Stalker, which is Richard Ramirez, I think he was um, dropped on his head as a child, I don't know. Um, I think that he was really dark and that's a different subject because he said he didn't care what happened to him, like if he died or if he was put on death row. Um, I think he had a lot of abuse from his childhood. My video cut out um, for some reason every time. When I have paranormal activity in my office, my video always cuts out at some point. So what I was trying to say was bipolar manic episodes or mania, okay, you can Google it. Um, basically it's when you get manic, um, your, your brain is firing neurotransmitters and dopamine like crazy and it can't stop. It doesn't know how to stop. It's just a uh, chemical disorder in your brain. Okay. You get this extreme high, this huge amount of energy. You have huge self-esteem. You get rapid speech. You don't need sleep for days, which a lot of these, um, you know, serial killers would just go for days or even like two days without sleep and do this crazy risky stuff and, and sexual behavior is a part of manic um which that could go for you know john wayne gacy right um but and jeffrey dahmer as well but when you go manic you actually black out after you come back down you kind of go in like a depression sort of mode and that point of when they do something really risky it's extreme risky behaviors uh they don't remember what they do they cannot recall it. So that is why I, th and I've seen this unfold, um, you know, with who I lived with. So anyway, that's just my theory. If you listen to serial killers, and once again, this does not go for all serial killers, but a lot of serial killers will say, when this occurred, when the crime supposedly took place, I did not remember it happening. And that I believe is due to some sort of a chemical imbalance and it could possibly be due to a manic episode. This would be equivalent to bipolar one manic episodes they do not remember what happens after they go manic they don't remember a thing and they are not lying when they say they don't remember a thing i also think that another circumstance that's very different is most pedophiles who are serial killers i think that that's not a bipolar thing. I think that's, um, they're reenacting the abuse that they had to endure in their childhood. And they just keep that vicious cycle going. Now, moving on to my chat about Ed Gein. So, as you guys know, if you've been to the Haunted Museum in Vegas, Zach does own Ed Gein's cauldron. I actually got, that was one of the first rooms that I was ever taken into privately before the museum opened. And the cauldron was um, what Ed Gein would use as he would de-skin his victims. So who knows really how many people Ed Gein had hanging over that cauldron. And the way it was designed is the room looks like an actual barn. It's beautiful, to be honest. Like, in a very macabre way, it's beautiful. In fact, I remember the first day I was in there and I, I had told Zach how just impressed I was with the way his mind works and the way he's able to visually see things and recreate them and bring them to life. Now that was the first day that Ed Gein had followed me home. Now clearly I'm an empath as you guys know. And I don't think he followed me home to harm me or to hurt me. I think that um, a lot of people that go in there are afraid of Ed Gein and especially like his energy because of the things that he did to women. I mean, come on, you guys know there's not a lot that I'm afraid of. And so I went in there just very myself and I was not afraid of him. I could definitely feel him in that room for sure. And uh, there's a part in that room, if you stand, you can feel him like basically jump down 
from the the rudders that are like up above and when he followed me home there was a lot of EVPs that were going on I have that on my other channel I do think that Ed was was severely mentally ill um not that that's an excuse for the crazy things that he did he should have obviously never been you know mutilating humans and 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 but in a way, I think he was misunderstood. And, and if you're looking at someone who was born, you know, in 1906, like he was, it was very shunned at that time to get mental health help. Um, really, until recently, it was shunned to get mental health help. It wasn't like a common thing that, you know, was talked about in society in general. The energy I get from him, um, from Ed, is that he's very um, alone. And I think that he knows what he did was wrong, but I think that he's deathly afraid to cross over to the other side because he doesn't want to meet his maker. I don't think he wants to know what consequences are waiting for him, probably because of um, things people have instilled in him over time. Um, but, you know, it's crazy. This is going to sound crazy, but when I'm around Ed Gein's spirit, I don't feel... Um, what you would think to feel. I don't feel a darkness. Um, I find him to be a very just lost, lost soul. Okay, we need a lip here. What do we think? What are we thinking for lip? Like, it's probably gonna be dark like always, but. And I know that you guys wouldn't all rock these looks, okay? Why don't you try it one day though? You know what I mean? Clearly I wanted to go a little bit more macabre, dark, edgy today because we're talking about Ed Gein. I'm gonna go in with a lip first. Let's do two. Let's do two different lips. Let's do um, Aeronaut. Is that what it is? In black by ColourPop. When I do dark colors, though, I always use a lip brush because I do not. I don't trust myself. Had to hide that guacamole. So this is the look with a dark lip. ColourPop has some good stuff for the price, for sure, 100%. It's definitely on the low cost end of the spectrum. I love these sleeves, by the way. Okay, now I'm gonna do it with more of a nude lip, just to see how it looks. This time I'm gonna use a matte lip, also by ColourPop. This is in Boy, which is like a super plain beige. And then I'm gonna go in with just like a bright, clear gloss. This is in bippity boppity boo or whatever, I don't know. I don't know, I think I'm digging the like, the neutral lip better. But I'm also always doing such like crazy, dramatic looks. Why can't I just be like plain and boring? It's just not for me. I don't think I could live a life that was plain and boring. I myself am strange and unusual. So that is it for the look today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed talking about Ed Gein. He has come to my house several times when I come back from the museum. Um, the next question is, how do I get him out? I sage, <laughs> I sage that. Shit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't let, I don't let demons chill in my house. You know what I'm saying? Please make sure that you give my video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please leave me spooky comments below. Anything that you guys want to see or talk about next. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Don't let demons chill in your house, you know what I'm saying?